Yo. 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 What's good? What's good? Stormy B-Man and I am back. Welcoming you to Answering the Bell with Stormy B-Man. Our Sunday morning call in for this Sunday, April 14th, 2024. This is number 115 in the series of call-ins. As we move right on down the line, we're going to talk a little bit about boxing, the fights that we had this past weekend, maybe some of the fights that are on the horizon that we can look forward to before this month ends. But all in all, yesterday was another one of those full days of boxing. For the diehards, man, it began roughly around 11 a.m. Central Time and commenced all the way around to close to 11.30 p.m. Central Time. So we had a full day. We saw prospects champions and uh, hopefuls huh and then we saw some disappointments huh some of my, some of our familiar names unfamiliar with the embarrassments but they better get used to it lest they change their approach to their craft and there were a few included in that. Then we saw some guys that are just on fire. And it looks like that nothing may stop their runaway trains. So there's a lot to look forward to. Instead of just the uh, same old usual suspects that you find in the headlines every other day. You know, I'm not an advocate of that kind of mess. I talk about the sport, man. And even when it's really bad stuff going down, I try to find some place, some semblance of a uh, leveled field where I can just uh, talk about boxing and the quality of boxing. So that's what I set out to do. You can look at my main page. Look at my lives. Look at the video content that I upload. More than consistent there. Where there are examples of exactly what I speak. And I'm proud of that body of work. It's just unfortunate that so many aren't partaking in the opportunity to fulfill themselves with what's made available. It will help you, I guarantee, provide a sense of understanding, provide a sense of being on top of what's transpiring. Never forget that I like to approach it from a coach's standpoint, a mentor standpoint, a teaching standpoint. And let us also remember and be reminded that we are in the age of man leaning on his own understanding as biblical prophecy predicted. So mentoring, teaching, be dismissed by know-it-alls. Huh? They don't have the time. Ear to hear or heart to receive. Which is why their waywardness typically ends 
in the most unfortunate directions and paths. Sometimes you got to get your ish ripped before you learn to pick up the tip. Yeah! Good morning. Welcome to Answering the Bell. Take a look and see who we got in the building this morning. My man Eric Jordan is out there early saying Stormy B Man salute. Sensei with the Pi May emojis. No Smoke TV has joined us as well. Saying Sensei, hashtag LDBC or nothing. Yeah. Hashtag LDBC versus everybody yeah and he also brings up no smoke gaming if you haven't had a chance to check out his two channels do so take a moment out right this minute go over and give the brother a sub he's got some of the most incredible editing skills that I've seen amongst the youthful content critique content creators out here today yeah universal truth is out there saying salute sensei got those channel emojis going for him what's good with you universal we really appreciate that boxing and barbecue my brother is out there saying morning stormy Boxing and barbecue, I was I woke up this morning, man, looking forward to a specific breakfast, but didn't have the time, man. But I wanted one of them big old fashioned country breakfasts this morning. Man, and I know what you I know what you can do out there. I know when we talk, that food talk, huh? It ain't gonna do nothing but make the appetite build. <laughs> But I didn't have the time to invest in it this morning. Oh, I wish I had. Mr. Shelton's out there saying, Rah! What's good with you, Mr. Shelton? NBA D Nice is in the building. King Vonnie, 86. Where you been, man? Where you been? Huh? Doing that home assumption, dip, dipping back into the bushes, huh? Peeping, huh? Well, you done came out into the light today. It's good because it's Sunday, a beautiful day, huh? That's good. That's good. Step into the light, huh? So that you be the one that casts the shadow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. JDM is in the building saying, Stormy B Man, salute. And the chat. Yep. That's right. Are oh, you welcome there? No Smoke TV, you're welcome, bro. Main event, Mark. My brother's out there giving the dap. What's happening with you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, King Vani, I know you're still listening. I know you're still listening. That's why I say you must have pulled that Homer Simpson, huh? Dip back into the bushes like you incognito. But let me tell you something, huh? As long as you a brother, huh? You can never be incognito because they got all eyes on you. You dig? Uh-huh. They know where you are. And you should know sooner or later. They'll be coming to get you. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boxing and Barbecue says, I'm ordering myself a new pit here in a few weeks. I'm going to text you a pit when I get it. It's going to be crazy. Hey, man. Hey, hey. And when you show me, hey, show, send me the pit of the pit when it's ready to go and then show me the pit 
when you got something on it and then show me the pit of a plate that you done fixed. <laughs> That's the aftermath. That's what I'm talking about, boxing and barbecue. <laughs> yeah! Huh? See, you know, we foodies. This is how we do these things. Yeah! Bars. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. We got to get another dining dish going. Spring is kicking in. You know, for here in the shy, spring just goes straight to summer. It, we, we still have cool temperatures and everything be, before it finally switches over. So, you know, when I get my grill going, I'll have some pictures to post too, you know. But uh, I look forward to it, man. I look forward to it. Salute to Eric Jordan out there with that $5 super sticker you dig yeah what's good with you eric jordan thank you so much for the super sticker man putting a little color and animation into the chat yeah yeah that's what's up main event mark says been loving the am short vids since they try to catch them while at work every day yeah, man, I try to put something out there every day, man. You know, put I, I try to put something out there. And it's always something different, too. You know, it's not the same subject every day. There may be familiar names and faces dropped with a different subject, but I just try to keep it moving. You know what I mean? Keep the needle moving on the record. Huh? <laughs> Boxing and Barbecue says, I got you. Yeah, man. Eric Jordan is laughing. He says, you making a brother hungry. Hey, man, let me tell you something. Men like to get their belly full. Huh? And it, 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 you ain't got to be all so full till you can't move and all of that. But good food and good beverage. Huh? And we can build things we build buildings we build roadways huh jail houses for some of them that need to be locked away <laughs> yeah some of your cousins huh i remember i was growing up one of my relatives told me he's like some folks love looking at life from behind them steel bars huh it's always gonna be a need for that always yeah Huh? <laughs> That's right, man. Manny Ben Mark says, you talk about everyone, which is refreshing. Yeah, man. I tell you. But see, you could do that when you pay attention to the details of the sport. When you're looking at stuff from the surface or only from what you like, huh? Then you have limitations. There are no limitations when it's all inclusive. Huh? But I'll tell you one thing. The philosophy can cover that all that's inclusive with no limitation. Yeah. But see, if I was only talking from what I like, huh? then Stormy B-Man, me, I would be living it myself. Is that not a fact? Yeah. The sensei, because it makes sense what I say. Yeah. <laughs> no Smoke TV is out there. He got those emojis up there with the food. <laughs> You ain't helping, man. You ain't helping at all. Putting out a pretzel sticks, a bowl with Chinese takeout container, pies, and tacos. Man, you a fool. You need to come back with that when, when Boxing and Barbecue and I kick off that next dining dish. That's what's up with that. You come out with that then, and we, we can roll. Huh? Huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> Salute to Flawless Mentality and Black Excellence, hosted by Dr. Mark, out there saying blessings to the God, the Sensei Stormy, my brother of elevation, fam, and the gods and beautiful goddesses of the mighty LDBC, answering the bell, call in fam. Yeah, that's a mouthful there, Dr. Dr. Mark. And then we have Mahari Nation Sports Podcast pulling up saying, Good morning, Stormy B-Man. <laughs> Where are you able to get that old deep voice from, huh? Huh? What's good with you? Good to see you out there this morning. Everybody doing good, I hope. Yeah, man. Y'all like my little boogie woogie I got playing in the backdrop this morning. You know, Stormy B Man is very eclectic in his music tastes and selections. I do it for a reason. But the only person I really heard pay attention to it is Dr. Mark. You see? But see, Dr. Mark, he got a few whiskers of wisdom on him. So you guys need to learn huh, how to do the same. Yeah. There's a reason, a method to my madness, huh? <laughs> Definitely is. <laughs> yeah. Now, see, look at that. See, now, I was not making fun of Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Now, see, but see, he's so used to going back and forth with some of the others that, you know, shine a little light on him sometimes. I was greeting him, huh? And I say, where you get that deep voice from? But now he want to come at Storm, huh? But see, all it shows is that some people Listen with the wrong hole, huh? It's supposed to be the ear hole, huh? Where you take in information, disseminate it, huh? And allow thought process to take place. Brain activity, as some may know it to be, huh? But when you take it in the rear, huh? And the wrong hole, waste is what it becomes right and therefore when you spew out your comments you can't tell the difference from which hole those comments come from huh the sputer or the pooter huh so just remember that Mahari Nation sports podcast Stormy ain't never got it mixed up Never. And you should strive to live and be on this earth and take in life as long as the sensei has and go further. Huh? See, that's all I got to say about that. Everything else to take care of itself. Now, if you need further help, Stormy ain't in the business of uh, comfort animals. Huh? I don't do that. But I got steel toe Tims, huh? That have been known when placed correctly in the right spot. It calls straighten up hymns, huh? Yeah! <laughs> Yeah. See, I'm going to take it back. See, I got my, my old backdrop today because I want to be retro. Huh? In case some forget, the sensei, huh? F plus, get to the back of the class. 
is what's on the wall. Yeah. You know what I mean? That wall is so representative. I kind of forgot, even myself, I had to remember that didn't I say earlier in my opening monologue, I said, building men with bellies full, huh? Build things, walls included, huh? We don't tear them down, but we can tear into somebody the same fervor, the same energy. Yeah. People like Hari Nation Sports Podcast need to be reminded of these things and also be reminded of F pluses huh? because I do pass them out gladly. Yeah! And ain't even got to the boxing talk yet. Huh? Why is that? Distractions come in all forms. But you can't do this unless you prepare for it. Huh? I ain't never off guard. Never. Mm-mm. Be ready. Huh? Just like some of you Viagra takers. Huh? Get ready. Huh? But don't come in here if you done took it. that stuff somewhere else. Don't be stabbing my fellow subscribers in the chat. Huh? Don't you do that. Get out. Jay Gibson is out there saying salute Stormy B and the fam. Salute to you, brother. Says morning to the fam. William Brunson out there saying salute stormy b man and chat salute to the person that gave me a gift membership that would be daryl alexander i haven't seen him show up in the chat yet this morning but my man daryl alexander be like santa claus huh coming out there with the membership uh donation that's great a selfless act got a uh, cash app donation by my brother, Main Event Mark. He says, just a little something. Appreciate you, OG. Thank you there, Main Event Mark. We appreciate you as well and your support, man. You know, we be out here and we, we communicate. And as you know, Stormy is very consistent. Whether I'm on live or I'm off live, you know, I still bring the same humor, the same wit, and sometimes be talking the same ish. <laughs> Consistently. Yeah. But that's what it is. That's definitely what it is. Huh? Hold on one second, guys. Sorry about that. Guys, I am back. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, you know what? A lot of times when we, when we do what we do here, people get the understanding that it's like, for show. 
because a lot of people do this for show. But you can tell just if you pay attention, focus in, dial in. Stormy is never doing this for attention. Because I don't really care. I don't, I don't, the attention, I, just, I want y'all to get the content. But, you know, I can be on here and just speak over a blank screen and, and still tell you what I tell you. This is not about my ego and all of that. It, nah. You know, but see, some of y'all, y'all be out there, he's scared to show his face. I ain't scared to show my face. You know what I mean? Some of y'all is, you know, you got issues and you want to look in another man's face. I don't know what that's all about. Huh? Hey, I know I got a peanut head. So what? So what? A lot of people like peanuts, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Your woman might like her. Huh? So be careful. Huh? Yeah. I know one thing. Stormy, you'll never say he, oh, he need a haircut. Huh? He need to be trimmed up. Huh? No. So get it together. Get it together. Let's get into some boxing talk, man. Y'all out there listening, huh? You want some gems? So let's get the gems flowing, huh? Yeah. Talk about a little boxing. Let's open it up with a little bit of foolishness, huh? Because next Saturday, we may be entertained or we may be disgruntled behind what takes place, huh? we seen that video with Tank beat your ass. Floyd showed me. He had your ass. I beat the shit out of Tank. Oh, I've seen the video. I've seen the video. I've seen the video. I've seen the video. You ain't gonna do shit. You ain't gonna do shit. You look like a ghost right now, bro. Go, you get hell, hell for real, bro. You get hell for real. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Okay. Okay. Your breath is just. I can hear you. You're not, you're not like that, bro. You're, you're not like that. You're not like that. The fear is getting to you. 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 I told you you're going to feel some fear, right? Didn't I tell you that? Didn't I tell you you're going to feel some fear? You ain't felt it. Stop it. Stop it. No, no, no. <laughs> now that was good fight promotion right there all the other foolishness man i would keep out of that but let me tell you something man based on stuff like that oh yeah i'll be ready i'll be ready to see him next weekend huh let me see these two guys get in the ring and start going at each other <laughs> I like that, huh? I like that. Shoving each other and stuff, man. Hey, hey, let's get in there and get it down, get it on for real, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> no smoke says the edited video sensei as an editor that sparring session was so badly i he said i felt offended i could have done a hell of a better job shaping my head man listen the, the, the whole thing was like just to put something out there you know that devin is human huh we already know he's human but the but the worst part that they what they did was they edited out Devin's successful parts. 
if you think all you gonna get is a guy retreating and moving away, <laughs> hey man. But then, how long did it take Floyd to uh, put that video together? Probably took him about six months. <laughs> We're talking about Floyd here, right? Cause he's too cheap to pay somebody to do it. By the way, there, uh, no smoke. He ain't thinking about, oh, let me hire this guy to put this together for me. No, he ain't smart enough to do that, huh? Because, you know, money may, all he, he gonna keep all that he may, huh? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah, man. But, he, you know, he got money to spend on some riding boots or something, huh? He ain't got time to be paying somebody to really, you know, make everything look good. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, you guys are looking forward to that fight next weekend? We'll see. We'll see what happens, man. <laughs> but I'm going to get ready to open up the call-in lines. We can have some of you call in and you can talk about your thoughts, maybe on this fight, maybe on the fights from last night, you know. But I'm going to tell you something. I ain't going to mess up this time like I did last time when I was trying to purchase the, the Fury and the Uso. Well, well, well. Okay, we got Eric Jordan, who's been a member for two months at the Todai, the beginning level. He says, Devin Haney for the win. LDBC strong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, Eric Jordan. It's your member Super Chat. Listen. Yeah, that's pretty loud. The, the, the message alerts are loud, man. I do that on purpose. That's for y'all to be able to hear yourself when you send a chat, a subscription, a membership, uh, purchase merchandise if you guys purchase merchandise while I'm on live it'll come up on the screen so and so has purchased you know a ball cap or a hoodie or whatever it comes up this is why I encourage you all to do these things because it's a whole entire community effort and I have those alerts on that's to acknowledge you the people that's for you guys that's for y'all egos let me get, get on Stormy's channel today with a t-shirt purchase yeah do it you know what i mean hey i'll tell you one thing it's better to get on there like that than to have stormy have you on here like this huh <laughs> shitty cuz hate glare that's right huh that's when you're doing well and then your friends or foes be out there looking at you sideways huh the shitty cuz huh hate glare him and uh what's his name russell mora the the referee huh the one who be stepping in and stopping people sending them to the wrong neutral corners and everything that's why i got them paired up in that photo i'm glad they took their shot close together in pro close proximity so you can see the bullshit huh from them and that's how they look at you huh oh they'll write something in the chat that be like yeah salute og salute og but in the meantime they really looking at me like this The shitty club, the 
shitty cuz hate glare. Huh? That's what that's called. Huh? That's right. Huh? That's every bit as bad as that look that Snoop Dogg have, huh? But see, when you got a whole band of them, look how they all looking, man. They got that damn look like. They just can't stand you, huh? But they your boy, though. But they refer to you as, uh, you know, uh, you know, OG and all of that. That ain't no damn, you know, term of endearment coming from you, huh? It ain't. <laughs> a condo what's good with you bro <laughs> jay grant jr i see you out there jj was out there too what's good with you <laughs> no smoke says russell moron yeah one of the most on the take uh sanctioning body cronies that you could have out there he might as well be working for tony soprano the way he he incorporate his uh decisions as a referee i'm glad he retired huh but i wish somebody would have retired him that's what i wish yeah huh coming out there like that Yeah, but the phone lines is open, brothers and sisters. Come on in there and talk to Stormy, man. What we got this morning? Boxing and barbecue, you want to call in this morning? I know last week we couldn't get you, bro. We couldn't get you last week. How many of you guys tuned in to Barrett and Gill yesterday, man? That was a damn good fight, man. Those two guys. You subscribe to the zone and didn't see the fight I suggest that you go back and check it out okay we got six five one in the building who's calling what's on your mind good morning you know who this voice is you know who this is it's your boy my Iron nation sports podcast <laughs> <laughs> What's good with you, man? What's good? What's good? I will speak in my low, uh, robotic voice like Junior the Truth thinks he thinks I talk. Man, listen, let me tell you something. Every single listen, this is not this is it, this this was just a little bit of fun and joy, but every time I've had I've every time with somebody when uh, when Junior make fun of my voice, you know I had to come I had to come in with the gloves up and Vander Holyfield style start, start rumbling and stumbling. You understand? You know, you know that's my nature now at this point. But hey, you should you know, always defend yourself. You know what I'm saying? But understand this about me: I ain't never trying to roast you. I ain't never. I'll say funny stuff. I know, but I don't. I don't do the roasting thing because there's. I, I like to say that what I put out is intelligent human. Not that nobody else does, but I describe mine as intelligent human. I find funny things to say. But it could be you or anybody. It's not, you know, it's not directed to pull you down. Because I'm never trying to tear anybody down. Unless you happen to be shitty. Oh, yeah. Unless you happen to be shitty cuz. If you're shitty cuz, I'm going to take you down. Huh? I'm going to take you down. Because <laughs> shitty cuz deserve to be taken down, bro. Hold, hold on one moment. Let me acknowledge the super chat from my brother Eric Jordan out there. He says, Stormy, that was classic, Sensei. 
you got me crying talking about uh the shitty cuz hate glare yeah that's you listen man i i told you guys i be working on stuff i come up with stuff but it take me a little minute to put it all together because you know i i'm not all that adept at this computer stuff and everything but once I get a little something kicking in, man, I'm like, yeah, this going to work, you know. And I knew you guys was going to like that one. By the way, I was on Instagram, no, Twitter yesterday because that's his home base, Shitty Cuz, right? Shitty Cuz is on there yesterday, and he said something about I wanted to give a shout out to my brother, you know, I'm supporting and this and that. But even though people see me supporting my 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 bros he was like they be coming at me but he says but that's okay i you know you know i still love all y'all anyway i wrote a specific message to him i said nobody cares about you shitty cuz <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even respond good because he shouldn't if he do it's on you know what i'm saying because listen yeah. That's the one thing that we know how to do coming out of the shot. We know how to roast, huh? And if he want to go there, he can all he want to. But the first thing he better do is get a touch up, huh? Get some clippers because he, he one of them too that need to see a barber, huh? Yeah. Because, see, that's the one thing. Listen, a man going to tell you, huh? That's the one thing these guys forget. That's like when they get on and they go live with Bill, you know, Trill Bill Haney. And they be trying to be disrespectful for Trill Bill. But you look at these guys. They need shaves, huh? They need a little, you know, get the pimples busted off their face, huh? They need, they look like their clothes is dirty, huh? They don't look fresh. They don't look popping. But they be trying to come at this grown man who got a son doing some great things in the sport of boxing. And they millionaires. How can you even equate yourself, huh? You got dirty underwear hanging on the bathroom uh, rack behind you while you on live talking crap to him. And he talking to you from one of his, you know, $100,000 vehicles. He's sitting down chilling or his multimillion dollar home. You see what I'm saying? The, 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 mm-hmm. the whole mental aspect of these morons getting on there trying to talk to him like that. And they think, yeah, I, I told him off. You ain't did nothing but make a damn fool out of yourself. That's the equivalent of these women who get on there taking selfies, making fish, li- fish lips, and then you, you look in the backdrop and they got dirty laundry on the floor and stuff. huh? Or a little baby that's unattended to that need his hair combed and needs some fresh clothes on or a pamper change. But they in front of the mirror mm-hmm. taking selfies with fish lips. Huh? You, you see what I'm saying? It's like it's the same thing. But it's this generation, bro. Yeah. That's why I can talk about them like I do. Because it's like they don't know better. They're young enough to be my kids. Huh? And what, if, what do you think I'm going to tell mine? <laughs> I'm going to tell mine the same thing. Get your dirty butt in the tub. Huh? And go get your hair cut. Huh? Go put some cl- clean clothes on. Go finish high school or something. You know what I'm saying? Learn to spell. Instead of saying D-A, learn that the word is T-E-J-A. You understand? Get out of here. But I'm 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 done with my little soapbox. <laughs> Mahari Nation. Go ahead, bro. What what you want to talk about this morning? Yeah. So basically, you know, I've been looking forward to this uh Devin Haney versus uh Ryan Garcia fight and Literally, is this like the promotion of the fight has just been absolutely crazy. But as expected, you know, the fight has been, you know, drawing some buzz. You know what I mean? And I just think that what we're going to see in the fight is a beautiful boxing exhibition by Devin Haney. And more importantly, too, I think that we're going to see everything of Ryan Garcia finally crumble down on his head and finally break down. That's what I tend to see because... The way I look at Ryan Garcia from this aspect is he's just not mentally there. And he likes to go off the rails. And I think we're going to see him just completely just collapse and may pull off a Roberto Duran and just say, fuck it, I don't want to do this anymore. I quit. 
I think I think he's gonna quit in this fight. I really do. Well, it's interesting because <laughs> as as you're speaking there, my thoughts about what could happen or whatever is uncharted because I haven't seen a fighter behave like he's behaving. And I don't know how much of that is real. I don't know how much of it is of concern or how much of it is, you know, all just hype for the the event. But I do believe on fight night, we're going to see something that we had not anticipated. Not necessarily him having a mental breakdown or not going through the fight or doing something successful in the fight that we never saw coming. It could be a culmination of things, but I do believe that the stage has been set for that. That's why boxing is called the theater of the unexpected. But I just hope that Devin understands the magnitude about what he's about to deal with because he's fighting something greater than Ryan Garcia in this particular fight. There's a lot of people that don't want to see him be successful. And that, at the end of the day, is a greater challenge than any single opponent. Because you can't make everybody happy. You can't make everybody mad at you. You you can only give the best of what you can give of yourself. And that's what I expect him to be prepared to do. Um... Bill has done a great job with him over the course of the time that he's been a professional. And I know there's a lot of dislike for that because he's not the stereotypical black fighter. He's not the fighter that you could say came from dire straits and a bad backdrop, grew up in a crack city and all of this stuff. See, that's what they want to sell about you because They've created the falsehood that that's who you are, you know, just because of the color of your skin. It doesn't matter where you came from, what you know, how you were raised. You, you, the consideration of you having values, ethics, virtues, they don't care about that. These are people who consider you less than human beings. So you'll never change that dynamic. Because they teach that from to theirs from birth. So you, you can't change a culture. You can't change the climate. Because they've set the tone for the climate and the culture. That's why it is imperative that you understand that you raise yourself beyond that. And teach your own beyond that. But see, we got those who are bound by the chains of that throughout history and they are willing to uphold it ridiculously and they'll fight you they'll hurt you harm you kill you to maintain that and that's the worst part of it all and then you got the nerve to get mad because migrants come into the country and they talk about you and put you down and they're receiving benefits that you should have gotten everything. But you was too busy killing your own, selling out your own, dancing for those folks and doing all this other stuff. huh? Murdering your own who had potential. Kid go away to school, becomes somebody with degrees and come back home to celebrate and you shoot him. Huh? But a criminal who's been put away for 25 years can come home and you throw him a party. Come on, man. Are our problems greater than what the surface tells you? Of course they are. But see, Stormy B-Man don't have to come out here and talk about it because we got plenty of other brothers and sisters out here that got platforms that could tell you about that stuff, but that don't mean I ain't fucking aware of it. You understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. People like to hide. People like to hide with their favorite fighters. They like to hide behind the facade of what they are perceived to be because they because they believe that they should be in the position that they're in. But there's like you, my boy, you said many times, 
there's a reason why you are the position that you're in. And I feel like I feel like we see that a lot, a lot in boxing. You see a lot of the fanboys around YouTube that try to, you know, justify all the behaviors. And unfortunately, it's a it's a microcosmic, you know, perspective of where they are in life. And that's the and that's another problem I see a lot in boxing. Yeah. And and I'll tell you, um, some of these guys who are at the top, or you, like you used the word a moment ago, perceived. That's a very strong word because there is a, per, a, a perception that some of these fighters are really good and that nobody wants to fight them and you know, it's hard to make deals and so forth and everything like that when it's all a facade to begin with. Because some of these guys have been placed strategically for certain types of representation. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'll give you a great example of what I'm talking about. Errol Spence Jr. Now, it's unfortunate what happened in his personal life with the accident and all of that. However, you know how they say boxing is a business and certain fights don't get made? Y'all don't understand because boxing is a business. Boxing is a business. Okay, that's fine and dandy. <laughs> but in business, are you not held accountable for not only earning your keep, but you also have to pay your way. Now, what does Stormy mean? Where is he going with this? Allegedly, Spence is now breaking away from Derek James. And it may be over money. You know, money that may be owed James money that Spence feel that he shouldn't have to pay James or whatever. Regardless of what type of agreement that they had, that's actually their business. <clears throat> but I'm going to use this as an example of what I'm talking about because if Derek James has earned anything, should he not be compensated? Even though you may feel that that's a heck of a lot of compensation. Mm -hmm. But at what cost? You heard me use the words earlier. Ethics, values, virtues. Funny how those lines of those things get erased when certain people come into economic windfall. This ain't the first time it's happened. It won't be the last time it's happened. I thought I recall hearing that Kevin Rooney, when Mike Tyson fought Michael Spinks, that was the last fight that Kevin Rooney had trained Mike Tyson for. But I had heard something that Kevin Rooney made one to a few more million off of that fight purse of Mike Tyson's against uh, Michael Spinks. Some people were at that time, they had said, you know, because it, little byline stories, it came out because we didn't have social media back then. It's like, that's too much money to have to pay Kevin Rooney. Is it? If the coaches and trainers are paid by a contracted percentage, then that's to be upheld. If you made $200 million and the coach's percentage is $20 million, you're supposed to pay him. It, it, I'm sorry, but yeah. that's how that works. This is why, and if you listen to my content, I talked about this Anthony Joshua came to Derrick James's gym and camp and spent well over a year or more in there, learning from this man, 
learning from the champions that were around him, quality people in the U.S. on U.S. soil. He moved here for a duration. He fought a fight against Jermaine Franklin. He won that fight. Derek James coached and trained him through that situation. But we're well over a year of time where he sees how the guys eat, drink, and sleep professional boxing from a Western standpoint, which has always been considered a little bit of a higher notch than the UK. But I'm not saying it is, but that's been the consideration. Now, when he got ready to fight these big fights, where he gets that real big economic windfall from the Saudis, he conveniently left Derek James. And he went over there and he got with Ben Davies. Now, Ben Davies is the UK equivalent of like what they've kind of put him in that seat of being a guy like he's the man over there right now, the guru, the Freddie Roach or whatever, okay? Even though he's a young guy. But as soon as Joshua defeated Otto Wallen, and then, of course, Francis Ngannou, and notice how nobody's talked about Joshua's money, have they? Nobody. Right. But we know because he was fighting for the Saudis, they paid him very well. They would talk about Deontay's money, how much he might have been making from the Saudis. But isn't it interesting that they didn't talk about Joshua's money? I'm saying this for a freaking reason. Nobody asked the difficult questions. Is Derek James going to get some of that money? Because what Derek James set in place allowed Joshua to have some of the success he had. He did not spend enough time mm -hmm. with Ben Davison to, to learn the nuances of what was executed against Wallen. But nobody said these things. I said them, but nobody wanted to really touch on that. And now Ben Davison is the perfect guy for AJ. He has righted the ship. He has got AJ's confidence back. He's got this. He's got that. He's there. Oh, he's done so much. He's fucking better than Eddie Futch. If you don't get all the way the hell out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> I know, right? But see, I was <laughs> one who talked about that. And I'm a very small channel. There are other guys out here that have huge channels far f 10 times bigger than mine. They're not saying these things. Why? Is it because they don't know any better? That could be. Is it because they don't care? That's definitely in there. Is it because they may not really know how to look at things for what they are and see the games that are being played? And if they do see them, they don't want to talk about them because they are playing and are a part of the game themselves. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Yep. And the audacity to, to compare Ben Davidson to Eddie Futch. <laughs> the but, audacity. But, but I'm just saying, they're, they're trying to tell you yeah. he's so good. All you got to do, because this what is time? one of the things that I know that a lot of the brothers yeah. from our community, and when I say our community, let me just be real and say it, like the LDBC, because I'm a part of the LDBC proudly. But I do go over and listen to some of the UK boxing producing uh, uh, channels. Uh, and I'm talking about the bigger channels, like the, 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 the fight hubs and stuff like that, because I, I want to be able to know what they're talking about. And like I said, I had enough of tuning in 
the 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 and you and you listen to these Gareth A. Davies and all these guys and you hear what they're talking about. The Simon um what's his name? Simon can't think of the guy's last name right now. But th these guys are over there talking and their talking points are from a small circle. It's like wow, it's minute. It's very like looking through your hand like a periscope. But I don't talk boxing through that small window. I talk it from a broader scale. Whether I'm talking to somebody from over there or elsewhere in the world or even vast, I can talk about this sport. And it don't have nothing to do with what I like because I'm rarely telling you what I like so you don't even know. Right. But to hear them talk about Joshua the way they're talking about him now, oh, he's so rejuvenated. He's this, he's that. Oh, it's great. And Ben Davidson has done it. It's like, man, are you freaking kidding me? There are about five fighters at the top of boxing in the heavyweight division that's not named Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. They could have done to Francis Ngannou what they did to him. Francis Ngannou didn't need to be in the ring with those two men. In what sport is someone that is not even a considered a novice be allowed to go in there and fight the best or challenge the best? Mm -hmm. Off the street, literally. Because you got muscles. And how about this? Does anybody really realize that Mike Tyson, who was a part of Ngannou's preparation and training for Tyson Fury, was not a part of Ngannou's preparation for Anthony Joshua? Did anybody know that? Nope. Funny how it wasn't talked about. Funny how Ngannou wasn't asked, hey, where's Mike Tyson? But did we not hear Mike Tyson say years ago he didn't think that Anthony Joshua f should fight Deontay Wilder? Yep. Now put one and two together. Mm-hmm. You see what and I'm saying? And keep in mind, Stormy Z-Man. Yeah, exactly. But and also keep in mind, too, this is the same guy that that Don King tried to make sure that Tyson never fought Evander Holyfield early on in the early nineties, prior to their fight that they were supposed to, they were supposed to happen in what, 92, 93 before Tyson went into prison. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know why Tyson fought Holyfield when he did? <laughs> Well, because well, cause I remember I remember reading some stuff in between like 95, 96, after after Evander Holyfield lost the third time to Riddick Bo, Don King viewed Evander Holyfield as shot and thought this is the right time to fight Evander Holyfield, not knowing the determination and resolve that this guy had that Mike Tyson never had. Well, that's... Part, part of it, part of it. But okay. yeah, after Holyfield was stopped by Bo in their third fight, he took some time off. And he had an opportunity to come back and fight again on a heavyweight triple header. He fought Bobby Chez, who was a former cruiserweight and light heavyweight at one time. Bobby Chez was a very good fighter, you guys. I don't know why he's not talked about more because Bobby Chez was a good fighter. But at heavyweight, he was really not a, a real heavyweight. His frame didn't call for it or anything. But Bobby was the kind of guy who will take on a challenge. So they had picked him to fight Holyfield. In this fight against Holyfield, Bobby Chez survived and fought 
against a Holyfield who did not look his best. I don't think Holyfield trained hard for Bobby Chez. I don't think, you know, you have those kind of fights. But anyway, and you know, Holyfield was my favorite fighter. But um, he looked horrible against Bobby Chez. It was like, man, even I was saying, I was like, he should mm-hmm. retire. This is ridiculous. That's when Don King told Mike, we can fight Holyfield now. It's a good name. You can make good money. And, and uh, it can keep your needle moving ahead. But one thing they underestimated about Holyfield, like a, other fi- like a lot of fighters that ended up in the ring with him, was his competitive nature. Holyfield had always known that the people didn't respect him because he didn't win the title from Tyson. And no matter if he fought Foreman and Bo and Michael Moore and all those guys, it didn't matter. He never beat Tyson. So Holyfield was driven. You know how people say that Buster Douglas was motivated because his mom died to beat Mike Tyson? Well, I think that Buster yep. Douglas' motivation to win one for his mom was there, but I don't think it was as strong as some of people have made that out to conveniently be because he had the tools that always gave Mike problems. He was six foot four, had a piston jab, had good lateral movement, decent pop on his punches, fast hands. All of those things, every fighter that Tyson fought with those dynamics, he did not knock those guys out. They all went the distance with him. James Quick Tillis, Tony Tucker, James Bonecrusher Smith, Buster Douglas, a Mitch Blood Green. That's five. You, if, if you talk about those men, they all presented those same problems for Mike, and he knocked none of them out. Mm-hmm. So the writing was on the wall that that was the prototype guy that could beat Mike Tyson. And the fact that they said they couldn't get a fight in America, nah, that's that was bull crap. Don made plenty of crap fights in America. But they took yep. it to Tokyo because they could get a, a better cash in dividend on the back end over there in Tokyo from the Japanese. That's why they took that fight over there. But there was another factor that nobody knew about at the time. That fight was James Buster Douglas's last contracted fight with Don King. Did you know that? That I did not know. Mm. Buster Douglas was a Don King fighter for a number of years and That fight in Tokyo, even though they took it to Tokyo, the next fight was supposed to be not Buster Douglas, but Mike Williams, the guy who played Union Kane in Rocky V. Now, Mike Mm. Williams had fought uh, Buster Douglas on the undercard of Mike Tyson and Carl Truth Williams. 91 second, a 93 second blowout by Mike Tyson. But on the undercard, Buster Douglas beat the crap out of Mike Williams. He was a big sculpted dude. He had muscles and everything. And Buster was beating him with his jab only. Dropped him a couple of times, knocked him out. So Buster got the fight with Mike Tyson. Right. Because that's how Don had. He had a whole stable of heavyweights. He had all these heavyweight contenders, but he didn't have the top heavyweight sign like Holyfield and Lennox Lewis. Don didn't have those guys. That's why he kept them on the outside away from Tyson. Didn't have Riddick Bowe either. So it's like Mike was fighting guys in Don's camp of heavyweights. And Buster was the next man up. But Buster, who Don and he, they they clashed and bumped heads a lot anyway. He still was fighting. He beat the shit out of uh, 
uh, Oliver McCall, Buster Douglas did. Mm-hmm. And, uh-oh, check this out. When he fought Oliver McCall, he beat the crap out of Oliver McCall. He didn't knock him down, but he just outboxed him, put that jab and combinations on him. Oliver couldn't do nothing with Buster. Buster weighed in against Oliver McCall at 246 pounds, the same weight that he weighed when he fought Evander Holyfield. But they talked about how woefully out of shape he was when he fought Holyfield. Funny how the the bylines go when you really know the details of things. But the reason that Buster had a horrible output against Holyfield was because when he beat Mike Tyson, he was a free agent. Don King kept him in court all summer long, flying him from the West Coast to the Midwest to the East Coast in in litigation because he was trying to win those belts back from Buster in the court system because he was arguing that Buster was knocked out first by Mike Tyson when Tyson dropped him in that seventh round with an uppercut and he, he suffered a long count. The IBF was the only sanctioning body that really stood behind Buster. Suleiman, the father of the WBC and the WBA, that guy that has run that for so many years as well, they were backing Don King. So Buster never even took pictures with all of his belts after defeating Tyson in Tokyo. So he walked around, he he appeared on the Jay Leno show or something. He had the IBF belt with him. He didn't have all the belts with him. Many people don't remember that. But, long story short, when he entered the ring against Holyfield, he entered the ring as the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. But he lost that night against Holyfield. And mentally, he wasn't up for Holyfield because of everything he was dealing with with Don King. And Steve Wynn, the owner of the Mirage Hotel that paid him that $25 million to defend his title against Holyfield, opening up the Mirage where they had Sugar Ray Leonard as the MC announcer that night. He paid Buster that yep. money to host that and open his hotel. But I still think that Buster ended up having to pay a percentage to Don King some kind of way and pay for all of those attorney fees and stuff that Don kept him flying all over the country in the litigation against Mike Tyson. Now, some of you may not know these things, but see, Stormy B-Man is right here. Allegedly for all of this, because, again, it has happened. It's been over 30 years. But... The more things change in boxing, the more they stay the same. What's different now is that you got social media. And information can be disseminated much faster because of social media. Yep, absolutely. Hey, uh, so many, man, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get to work on my yard, man. So, But I appreciate the conversation, man. just hopefully that, you know, the fight between uh, Haney and Garcia lives up to the hype and, you know, that Devin Haney can go out and do what he does best and that's dominate. So thank, thanks for the thanks for the lessons, uh, G. And thank you for your call, brother. I appreciate you. Have a good Sunday. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace. Yeah. Great call. We had Abel Mahari out there from Mahari Nation Sports Podcast this morning. Appreciate the brother. Anybody else want to call in? What you, what you guys got, man? Let's have some conversation now. 
Talk about them heavyweights from last night, man. Ajagba and Vianello, man, they gave us some heavyweight action. That's what people want to see. Bodies getting battered and busted up. Two good fighters giving us a lot of action. They, those, they, together, they threw over a thousand punches in that fight between the two of them. Let's go, let's go. Don't tell me uh, Mahari Nation was the only one who wanted to call in this morning. Where's Dr. Mark at? Main event Mark, where you at? Jay Grant Jr., Jimmy Bernard, Universal. Let me hear from you guys. A condo. Okay, we got 706 in the building. Who's calling? What's on your mind? Welcome to the show. Uh, what's going on, Stormy L. King, buddy? Um, I really don't have a lot uh, to say, man. I just, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for the fights coming up. Uh, the Devin Haney, uh, uh, Ryan Garcia fight. Excited for the Tank and, um, and um, Frank fight. You feel me? I'm excited for the return of Wilder whenever that happens. And Spence, whenever that happens. And whenever Bud and Errol eventually fight, whenever that happens. But, you know, I'm just not even, like, giving boxing, like, too much energy. At least I'm not letting it pull any energy out of me. I'm just kind of just being a fan and just being cool, just watching and waiting for the event. Because, you know, it's just been a long time I went through the Wilder trilogy and you know, and spent thing and just been a big chunk of life, man. You know what I'm saying? Just a lot of energy, you know, put out. So now I'm just waiting, you know, for the events. Yeah. But, first um, first of all, I'm, who who am I speaking with again? I'm sorry. Uh King Vani. How you King doing? Vani, okay. Yeah, King Vani, much respect. Listen, I can understand what you're saying, but you know what's the worst part of what you just laid out about like the fights that you're looking forward to as opposed to what we've seen take place. There's been too long period of time of the quality fights taking place. It's been they've stretched it out too long. And it's like some of the fights are now taking place at the wrong times, bad times, never when they're hot, never when it's like, oh, when the crowd is saying, I want to see that. They have managed to mess the sport up where they're not giving you the fights in the time that you need to see it. And the only reason that is, and I've spoke about this many times in the past, is that the promoters and management of the fighters, even the networks, they are operating against the fighters' best interests because they're looking to see how much money they can make right. off of the fights, not the mm -hmm. fighters themselves. If you were trying to make the best fights, the fighters can, if, if the fights happen when they're supposed to, the fighters can still live and eat off of those circumstances because what happens is the popularity brings the two at the top together and then you say, wow, it ends up being, it can only go one of a couple of ways. It could be an outstanding classic for the record books or it could be a blowout that somebody was not as good as you thought. Or it could be boring. You know what I'm saying? But you don't right. know until you bring them together. The, the best thing that happens is, like last night, 
I said off of that fight, when I was doing my post fight, I said they should run that back. Effie and uh, Vianello, that was a damn good fight. You had ebb and flow. You had F.A. trying to turn southpaw. It was like they gave you a lot, and that wasn't expected from either man. But they both 29 years old. They both trying to take that next step up, step up to be contenders, and, and they, they, they laying it on the line. So what's the best way to reward them outside of a title shot? To let them fight again and pay them more money. You see what I'm saying? Right. This is how you stimulate the sport. You don't stimulate the sport feeding guys a bunch of guys that they know they could beat or on paper is they have no chance of beating the house fighter like Jared Anderson and that kid Murray last night. That kid Murray did not come to fight. He should never be allowed on a card again. Not because he's not a good fighter, but because he gave no effort. And when a person gives no effort, they should not be rewarded. If you came to work and didn't do your job every single day, when, when payday comes around and you got your hand out for your check, your boss look at you and say, but uh, King Vonnie, you ain't did shit, bro. Look at all that stuff right. piled up over there you were supposed to take care of for the past two weeks. You see what I'm saying? I, yeah, absolutely. And um, do you think there's any chance that we'll have any kind of governing body over Boston to make fights happen, like one rule, like non-negotiable type of thing? Like you got to fight such and such, and such and such date, and champions got to fight, and we making this happen, like non-negotiable, unless you get bought out type of stuff. I mean, just more of an iron iron fist type it, of rule, would, like something that isn't. It would be nice, but the reason that will never happen is the very reason why they won't tell you the truth about what goes on behind the scenes with boxing. There's too much money to be made off of the participant, the fighter themselves, that um, if, you, if you brought someone in to govern like that, then those guys lose their opportunity. They lose their money. Do you know when Muhammad Ali first turned pro, there was a committee of about 20 people, 23 people, I think, that were all investors in his career. When Joe Frazier turned pro, there was like 18. Where the hell? What? I'm, I'm serious. Like, and then, of course, when Ali had the, uh, the battle against the U.S. government, and they stripped him of his license to box and everything. Yeah, he was a millionaire by that time, you know, having fought and defended his title a few times. But when you have that many investors, do you don't not think those men made money off of Ali? Even when you went by? They got theirs first. Okay, okay. When you That's how that works, bro. Right. Joe Frazier. When Joe Frazier needed a dollar, people was like wondering, like, well, he was the heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah, Joe might have lived and had a nice place in Philly and stuff like that. He had his own gym. But people forgot about all those investors. You see what I'm saying? And though they may not be around today, like, you know, like, say you they, they invested in your career, you turn pro. And. It takes you four years, and then you become a world champion. Their investments start paying off when you become a world champion. So you're saying then, even as, as much as they make, they could make more or the investors make more? Like, of point? course. Didn't you just hear me earlier in the show? I was talking about Derek James, using him as an right. example for with Earl Spence. Earl don't want to pay him his money. But I said, okay, like, if a, guy, if a guy – makes a certain percentage and the fighter makes 20 million but his percentage out of your 20 million should be 2 million you got to pay him even though you think well damn I'm going to make him a millionaire that's the percentage 
And that's cold. Aaron ain't paid. <laughs> he ain't paid there, man. That's cold bloody, bro. Yeah, no. it, it is cold blood. But listen, he ain't the first to have done this. I gave the example of Mike Tyson against Michael Spinks back in 88. When Mike Tyson, in that fight, I think Kevin Rooney made somewhere between one to four million off of Mike and being his trainer in that, in that time. That's a lot of money for a trainer, right? But it's like, right. if that's the percentage, that's what the percentage is. It's not the trainer who made it. Oh, so he paying because of the percentage? Like he was like, "No, nah, bro, I ain't giving you all that." Like, well, that was that was Kevin Rooney's last fight with Mike Tyson, because that was Mike saying, Tyson's biggest that, yeah. payday up until that point. But what I am saying is, what Earl did, if that is the case, because that's rumored to be the case of why they're splitting okay. up. But if no. that is to be the case, Earl ain't the first person to do that. Bernard Hopkins did that to Bowie Fisher and also Nazim Richardson. But no, there, man. See, I'm a big judge of character, man. And that'll say, that, 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 that put tension in his armor for me, man. You don't do stuff like that. Like, there's some character stuff. You don't do me like me. Don't do exactly. Like that. Which is why me, Stormy B, man, I'm always talking about these guys and their character and their ethics. I don't give I don't care how sweet his combinations look. I don't care how hard his punch is. I don't care if he got a chin of granite and all of that. I want to know is his character 100 like a a granite rock or whatever because when you got character to the core that stands or withstands, it can stand and maintain through all trial and tribulation throughout to the end. You right. see, so, you know, after their career, I'm only going to have less of their character. They're going to finish the rest of their life based on their character. And their career is only going to be a little glimpse of who they are as a man. You know what I'm saying? So it's like character mean more than anything, honestly, to me. Listen, like, man, when I, fighters, when I talked about yeah. that fight last night where uh, the two the two guys, Gil and Barrett, fought last night, I talked about that being a great fight between two men. Now, that was a hometown fight between U.K. fighters, but they're still top super featherweights. But Jordan Gill and Zafir uh, Barrett, uh, those two men, they fought, they battled, they had contrasting styles. Gill was a come-forward guy, try to get you. Uh, Barrett is a, a mover who can stick and throw good combinations and things like that. Damn good body puncher. He ended up stopping Gill on body punches. But when the fight was over, they embraced each other like brothers, bigged each other up, talked about, man, he brought the best out of me. He was like, all respect. He's like, whatever he's doing in his career going forward, I want to see the best for him, whatever. They were, they were both like that toward each other, even though Barrett won the fight and Gil was right. the favor in the fight. The, the mere fact yes. that those men were able to show that before the public I yeah, gave them a sure. lot of credit for that. You know why? Because they put ego aside and allowed themselves right. to be the men who they are. Not who they try to portray themselves to be. Not who they want people to perceive them to be, but to show who they are. And those are the true winners in life. I talk about right. this it's kind like of thing all the time. But see, you got so many people, they want to big up Tank Davis. They want to big up Shakur Stevenson. They want to big up these guys out here that are not doing what I'm talking about. And they're showing you on a day in and day out basis that they are piss poor character individuals. And the only thing that is going to double down is when the greater circumstance of that, that will bring out the trueness of who they are happens you're gonna be even more disappointed, right? And um, like not trying to lose my point, man. Um, uh, like yeah, that's that's like the underlying respect as competitive. Like I never played sports, but it's like the underlying respect as a competitor. You know what I'm saying? That you're gonna, you know, end the fight the way you said those brothers ended the fight, and had that kind of respect and admiration for your opponent. You know, that's just what was what I would expect is you know expected. Like, like, you know, in sports and basketball, football, you should have that kind of respect for your opponent. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's at the root of it all. So, 
if you get to the point where you don't respect your opponent, then it's a little, a little bit deeper than, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and see, like I said, you, you'll always have, people will remember you for that. You know what I mean? They, they will, you, your legacy lives on through things like that. Like Evander Holyfield. He fought, he fought on far too long than he should, like a lot of fighters through history have. But he's a two-time undisputed champion in two different weight classes. He's a five-time heavyweight champion. Five-time heavyweight champion. He fought the best of his era. There's only two guys that he didn't fight that you kind of wish that you like. I would have loved to see him in against this guy and that guy. And that from his era was Razor Ruddick and Tommy Morrison. Everybody else he fought. Michael Moore, Ray Mercer, Bo, Lewis, Foreman, Tyson. What can you say about that? You know what I mean? You can't say anything bad. But when you got guys like... I feel like about Tank when it's all said and done. Yeah. Huh? That's how I feel about Tank. When it's all said and done, you look at their resume, you know, it's going to be those same questions. Yeah, because he... And, and he's worse because... He could have fought guys that would have built his name up even stronger than what it is, but he didn't fight the guys. He could have fought Loma. He could have fought Tio. Huh? He could have fought George Cambosis. He not saying because Cambosis was that dude, but because Cambosis had beaten Tia Fimo. So you go and take those belts away from him. He 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 could have fought Devin Haney. He didn't fight any of these guys. They're now rumored that he's going to fight Frank Martin, but they haven't even really officially announced it and given you a date and a venue yet or whatever. You know why? Because they're still looking at Devin Haney to see what's going to happen with him and Ryan Garcia. That's bullshit. Why don't you just go on and make your own path? They keep playing games with the public. Frank Martin is training like hell. Supposedly, Tank is training like hell. But for what? The proposed fight between them, possibly in June, but we got to see what happens with Devin and and uh, Garcia first. They want to see what his pay per view numbers are and everything because they've been lying to the public. What if Devin's pay per view with Ryan blows out Tank's uh, pay per view with Ryan? What if? I'm not saying it will. What if, though, no if it blows it out, then they're going to really look like stupid fools, aren't they? Or even if it oh, yeah. matches. But they've been playing games with the public. You go out there and you fight. Don't worry about the other guy's career. Worry about yours. The only time you should worry about him is when you're getting ready to face him. But you ain't never tried yeah. to face the guy. So why should I be concerned about what you're talking about? These guys like Leonard Ellaby and and, and, and and Floyd Mayweather, with what they're doing, listen, man, they are bad for the sport. They are bad because they have talented men, but they hold them back because why? They're using them as a cash cow. They're no different than those investors that I talked about with Ali and Frazier. No different. Because Ellaby has got generational wealth off of the back of Tank Davis and because of Floyd Mayweather's experience with him. And he's made money, and he's going to be a wealthy man and be well off, and his family going to be well off because they, f- they figured out the formula, how to suck the blood off of the fighters. And it's unfortunate that this younger guy, who might even be better than Tank, Kamel Morton, that, that, kid, that kid is good enough – to be fighting against world contenders right now. He is. He's that damn good. But they're not going to move him like that. You know why? Because that diamond might shine brighter than Floyd. And we can't have that, especially if Floyd is TBE, right? TBE got to maintain, right? If if, they're going to do that, you should sign to Floyd until you start getting momentum and then leave. Since they don't not let you outshine Floyd. You should let your light grow while you're there. Use that momentum to start your own thing, not try to grow to a Floyd while you're there because they're not going to let it happen. Yeah, but see, this is the part where they get you, though, King Vonnie. When you sign a deal with them, 
there is typically rhetoric in the contract that will guard or safeguard them against you leaving them if you know it gets to a certain point they put that in the contract these people are not stupid this is how they maintain control why do you think every fighter that has left bob aram is inactive for a duration before they sign with somebody else and resume their career Mikey Garcia is the best example of that recently. Mikey was with Top Rank. When he left Top Rank and broke his contract deal with them, he was out of the sport for three years. Three years of his career held up. People forget Andre Ward with his contract problem. Remember, he was lined up with Jay Prince and those guys. Remember that? And we follow Ward like that. And, mm-hmm. and Ward was out of the sport for a couple of years. They do that to they you on they purpose. Them. They put you on ice. Mm-hmm. And usually the contract will run to a duration that you reach a certain point. Like you'll be a certain point in your career. Like a guy can be... Uh, a contender or on the cusp of a title shot and your contract be running out and they can hold that over your head. Well, you don't get the con you don't get the title shot if you don't resign with us. Or if you happen mm-hmm. to have the title already that if you don't resign with us, we won't be pr- promoting your future fights. So you're going to have to go through a litigation of a new promoter, but they got to deal with us in court because we, we still own a piece of you and we help you get that title. You see the dirtiness of, of boxing now, the business aspect of it? See, these are the kind of things you guys don't really realize. You just be saying, man, why don't he fight so-and-so? Why don't he fight so-and-so? It, th- this is what happens. And that's an ugly part of the sport. That's yeah. why when you look at what Bill Haney has done with his son, it's great because Devin has got himself into a position where his name means something in the sport, regardless of what these channel content creators try to say. Oh, Devin ain't nobody. He's not the face of boxing. He's not this or that. He may not be the face of boxing, or he may be the face of boxing. But one of the things that he's able to do currently is move at his own discretion. And he can make deals with certain networks to fight other fighters that will not take him totally off of his square. That's leverage. And that's all you need is leverage. And people who know how to read the contracts. Yeah, you got all the hard work, all the, yeah, all the leverage. Man, it's amazing. Hey, hey, so I'm going to move right away. Um, But it's always a pleasure talking to you, big dog, man. I I could talk to you all day, man. (laughs) But, um, man, like for real, man, I I really could. But um, it's good talking to you, big dog, and don't make in the chat, man. Good talk. Okay, man. Good talk, bro. Appreciate your call. All right, brother. All right, peace. Yeah. King Vonnie, man. Good call there. Appreciate that. Yeah. JDM says, absolute facts. They milk tank for years. When you hit certain milestones in your Heyman deal, you automatically have to extend your deal with him for an extra three to five years you see what i'm saying listen man what what i'm talking about is it's it's no epiphany it's no breakthrough this is how the game has been run for a long time it's just a lot of people don't aren't, aren't aware of that dr mark if you're still out there call in now bro the lines are open dr mark yeah
I'm just trying to, you know, make you guys be aware of the fact that there's so much more, man. So much more. line is open now if somebody else want to call in man. we should have those likes up they should be up around 50 right now it's kind of low kind of low for my likings huh guys are holding back on my likes Okay, we got 225 in the building. Who's calling? What's on your mind? And welcome to the show. Hey, peace and blessings, Stormy. It's, it's Patrick, 225 Boxing Talk, calling. Yes, sir. Uh, out of Louisiana. Um, I, I just I just been listening to the past couple conversations and hearing you talk about uh, the way things are and behind the scenes of fighters' contracts and leverage and stuff and it, uh, the time period of Evander Holyfield and stuff like that. And it made me think about, uh, I think it was after a fight, it made me think about Lennox Lewis, a particular situation with Lennox Lewis and how uh, he was, it felt like he was so aware of what Lennox was aware of what was going on. But like, uh, I think it was maybe after a Riddick Bowe fight or not as maybe maybe it was that it was after I think it was after a really both fight and he was like uh they was trying to ask Lennox is he still fighting how would he like to fight Riddick Bow and stuff and I remember long story short Lennox was like I think everything is still up in the air I don't I can't say for sure if I'm fighting him or not it felt like uh some fighters have a good understanding of the game of uh, a game of chance of boxing, like even even with Dev, Devin Haney situation, I was watching some of his old fights, and you was talking about it's a beautiful thing that how he had he does have free control over who whoever he wants to fight, you know. And I I, I like I like Devin Haney. I love his activity, you know. It's like he's not too he don't spend too much time out the ring and at all. You don't, we don't never really see him held up over anything. I know he had the three fights with ESPN. He got those three fights out of here, out of here real fast. It was uh, Cambosis, uh, Cambosis twice, and then Lomachenko. Right. And so he was out. He was out his ESPN deal, and it's like ever, ever, ever since that, he he ain't been. It's, it's not like even then he it ain't felt like he was locked down or anything like that. Well, yeah, and before that, you know, his matchroom deal, you know, dealing with those guys with uh, the zone and matchroom, he was able to get oh. fights over there. The, the, the key to it is this. It's not so much like the way Devin's done it. It's what Devin has done, the decisions that he and Bill have made for his career. In order to be – you have to be willing to uh, – be a team player but know what your position is you know what i mean mm -hmm. and those guys have figured that out which is why uh also why they've moved the way they move when it comes to trainers in their corner at first i was thinking of it 
in a manner of which like, okay, you were with this guy, now you're with a different guy or whatever. But what they've done is they've taken elements of various trainers and learned from them. And then they've put what they've learned to what they already have garnered and they move forward yet and still again. Now, they don't yeah, feel that's, that's that the they don't feel that long tenure is in their plan because long tenure is if you're going to settle into a certain place. They want to be bigger than the box that others see for them. You know what I mean? And you do have to think outside the box when you want to garner that type of greater success. That's why it's to be respected. They're not trying to disrespect anybody, but they're doing right. it in a different way. See, Floyd, he focused in on the money and he wanted to be that type of guy. And guess what? He achieved that because no one else had that type of envision outlook. They're not going to let nobody else do it again because what happened with him <laughs> is they like, dang, we let that fool get get through here and he may. But see, he didn't have the type of progressive mindset that it could have benefited fighters in boxing. But he gave the illusion of if you chase the bag and keep undefeated, that's how you get paid. That's why some of these other guys don't have anything greater to shoot for. That's what set Devin and his dad aside because they're not looking at the sport like that. They're not looking at it as a business. They're looking at it as legacy building, which is a different thing. Of course, right. they're going to make their money while doing what they do. But if you're well invested and you're intelligently invested in the people around you, working with you to gain a greater goal, and also you've got your own promotional group, where you can bring right. others along the same kind of way. DHP. You, you, exactly. You, you, you're covering all the bases. See, this is what you heard me say a little while ago in the earlier call with King Vonnie. I said that they got a kid over there in Kamel Moten who might be the best thing that Floyd had, okay? But because of their philosophy, they're going to hold him back too. <laughs> And, and yeah, he's so I, good, he could be I fighting contenders point. right now. He's that good. Right. I'm not saying I would put him in against contenders right now. There's some things I still would like him to learn. But I'm just saying that you, you think of it like this. They let Lomachenko fight for a world title in his second fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, Camaro could three fight fights, for a world dude. title too. With some of this talent out here, he could definitely fight and beat some of these guys. He definitely could. But what type of trajectory are you trying to put his career on? If you're TBE and and all of that, we we we, we want to see the uh we, we want to see what you're laying out. And if you if you look cuz Tank still looked like he got training wheels on. Why? I don't know. Cuz Tank can fight. And there's a lot of guys Tank can beat. But the way that they're moving him, it's like they they're, they're purposely stifling his career because they don't want him to they don't want people to forget about Floyd get the fuck out of here Floyd is done you know what I'm saying yeah. right and you don't want <laughs> that for your guy that's why Devin yeah. didn't go with them yeah I, I, I see what he's saying he, he always like feel like he got a, a hand handed something though. he's always in the mix or something it's like, crazy. even with the tank yeah, it, it it's hard it's hard to envision Tank without him. You know, Tank could have like made to... Floyd so much more money, even out of the money that Floyd has made recently in these exhibitions that he's fought. Tank could have made him more money than that had they moved him correctly. Uh, but they... yeah, had they moved him correctly, let him let him fight Devin Haney. I... Let him fight Haney two, three times. Let him fight him, you know. Forget about this Haney. Is crazy. Hold on, hold on. Forget about Haney. Yeah. Tank's operation and objective was supposed to be Lomachenko. 
If he had oh, just yeah. fought oh, oh, Lomachenko oh. and done away with him, we wouldn't be hearing about Lomachenko's name by now. But if, because they didn't do that, Teofimo's name came into the play because Teofimo oh. ended up getting a fight with Lomo and he defeated Lomo. So now yeah. you got to deal with that. Then Teofimo goes out there and he loses to Cambosos. Now you got another name in the mix. <laughs> yeah, I see. Do you see that what I'm saying? Put it's it. like that put a monk in the game. All of this stuff is happening as a result yeah. of what Tank did not do. Just go in there and take care of freaking business. It's like I said to the and last that. caller, King Vonnie. I said, right now, they've told you that it's looking like he may be fighting Frank Martin, but they haven't really announced it because they got their eyes on the Haney Garcia promotion. They want to see how that fight does with numbers. They want to see how Haney looks in the fight and everything because every move that they make going forward is going to be contingent upon how Devin does, whether his pay-per-view numbers are going to be better or equal to or worse, or whatever. And they're going to build all their narratives around these decisions. And it's stupid right. because it's like you you are actually, dude, you, you are messing with, first of all, you're stifling Tank's career again. But that you, you got Frank Martin on, on the line, but you're not telling him, okay, we're doing this, we're rolling. It's like you got to wait to see what this other stuff happens first. Yeah, why is it so contingent upon? Like, y'all should just be fighting just because. Y'all don't need to be fighting. Because they've been lying to the people. Because they lying to the people. And if they commit a certain move, then yeah, they're going to look even it's worse. It's just like with Shakur. Anything. You know, the last few days, the, the news has come out where Shakur actually admitted that he wasn't the one that sent Devin Haney the bottle, the bottle at the party that said they signed yeah. the contract and all of that. But see, he lived off of that. He lived off of that news for a while. And his name was in the his name was out there on the Internet for a couple of weeks and everything off of that shit. Now he comes out and say, well, it wasn't even me. Why did you do it? But when Bill said it was a publicity stunt. People got mad at Bill. Oh, Bill is capping, and Bill is this, and Bill is that. It's like he's capping. What the hell are you talking about? Then he come out here. He he can admit he capping. He can admit admit it, and nobody 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 run with that though. Yeah, because he, the, the damage has been done already. That's why he's saying it all. Like now, a month later, two months later, he's saying. <laughs> but it's like, listen. Okay, let's put it like this. You ever seen somebody have an accident on themselves in public and they be like, oh, I'm embarrassed. And, and some people might have witnessed it. Right. But then two months later, you out here, you talking about people having accidents in public. And then somebody say, well, I remember when you had an accident on yourself in public. You'd be like, no, nah, man, that's cap. It's like, dude, I was there. It was. It happened. This is what happened. Blah, 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 blah. And then then a little bit later, you're going to come. Well, it did happen. It's like, well, why did you tell the lie? Why? Because it's like your ego. You didn't want yeah, nobody yeah, to yeah. see that this is who you really are and everything. This is why, listen, bro, I play that little shitty cuz uh, hate glare video I got now with him. I play that on purpose because this is exactly what it is, man. This guy, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but you have to call it for what it is. And right now, I'm playing it again. The shitty cuz hate glare. Because <laughs> 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 it's like, cause it's like the, the, I would not want to be the guy known for that. Huh? I, I don't. I want to be the guy known for, oh, he was trying to put the deals together. He was trying to fight who he could, this, that, and the third. That's what you want to be remembered for. Not this other stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. That but um besides besides the the the, the peculiars in boxing, I, I actually like the fight between Devin Haney and, and Ryan and Ryan Garcia. Um you know, I was actually looking at uh I was actually looking at some some of uh 
some of the fights, some of some fights last night with my brother. I was, I, well, some highlights and some fights. I was looking at he he was telling me about Monster anyway, and like my brother, he's a bit of a casual fan. I guess I I guess I'm I'm a little bit less than a casual. Like I know a little, just a little more. And uh, he was saying, man, the the Devin the Devin fight and stuff, it ain't it ain't it ain't looking too good. I'm like, what? What? What make you say that? What, what make you say, you know? And he was saying, uh, he was saying, oh, he's, he's selling a lot of tickets. He's only got fourteen thousand tickets. And I'm like, um, that's that's bad. Fourteen thousand people. And and I wind up telling him uh, I was watching the Mario Barrios versus uh, Javante Tank, uh, Javante fight. And I was telling them, you see as many people as in that crowd, there's gonna be probably just as much, maybe even more in the other in the in in the next Devin Haney fight. And regardless of his do good numbers or not, that's the only fight you know about right now that's coming up. That's the only fight anybody is that's the only fight that's relevant right now in the in the sport. Well, not relevant, but you know, that's big. Well the, and uh Well, I, I just wanna say this about talking yeah. about the numbers numbers talking about the numbers from a particular like your guy said that because he's heard yeah. it somewhere right yeah he's heard yeah yeah I'm, I'm knowing he heard it somewhere right but, right but this is what i want right. to say about that when so they already planting the seed you exactly. know what i'm saying the, I already planting the seed. Seed. when you listen the, to a source talk about something like that the numbers haven't even happened yet you could project numbers. You could you could you could just guess at what numbers will be. But until the numbers yeah. actually happen, you can't. But I'm gonna say this: the fight isn't built on the numbers. The fight is built on the two men facing each other. You see how common sense is no longer a part of the equation because people will pay to see what they want to see. Now I'm gonna tell you. There are gonna be people who want to see Ryan and 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 Devin fight. They follow them through their their amateur careers, and they're gonna follow them into the pros. There are people who want to see Devin shut Ryan up because Ryan has been behaving a certain kind of way. There's people who want to support Ryan because they want to get behind him and watch the Latin guy beat the black guy. I'm telling you, it's like all of this is the real deal. And those numbers, you can't speculate. The only thing that you can honestly say is they are there. And the night that it goes down, it's going to reveal. And that's what Tank's people are worried about because, again, Devin is better at what he does. And he has a cleaner image and everything. Tank has been a machine created situation to a greater degree. And he's built his career fighting Latin guys. De Devin hasn't built his career fighting Latin guys. He's been just fighting yep. the best fighters available. So yep. there's a chance for Devin's yep. numbers with this fight with Ryan to blow it out of the water. That's one of the reasons why Floyd was trying to tap in early and, and, and hurt the fight, saying that, oh, releasing that edited video and letting Ryan talk about it and stuff. He wasn't being yeah. Ryan's friend. He wasn't. He's trying to tank the promotion. And then whoever else has gotten into Ryan's head where he's been talking all this off-the-wall stuff, the Illuminati and all of that stuff, <laughs> whoever influenced him, because someone did. Because Ryan is Ryan is definitely a machine. He's a puppet. But whoever's doing that stuff, they're trying to angle it so hopefully the, the fight doesn't do as good. But you, at the end of the day, you can't stop people from watching two people go against each other, especially if one is black and the other one is Latin, and they're going to fight. They're going to be watching. Floyd, watching, built his, that's, Floyd that's built the, the fourth quarter of his career off of that stuff. He's basically built Tank's career off of that stuff. Now all of a sudden it ain't good. Now all of a sudden, I don't know, maybe I don't oh, know. You know, yeah, like, it's a publicity it's stunt, like uh, No Smoke said in the chat, a publicity stunt. It's like, no, this is real. 
it's not the only thing, but it's a huge thing that's a part of the sport of boxing. And that's the part that people, with their clear-mindedness, they're going to know that at the end of the day. You're going to hear people sit up and they'll tell you, Patrick, they'll say, "Look, you know what, uh, I don't know, man, I ain't going to watch this fight because the way Ryan been behaving and everything, and then on the day of the fight, they ordering it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they yeah, told you, yeah, they, they talked all that. that stuff to you, and then on the day of yeah. the fight, they ordering it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be a lot of yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? That all that, yeah. All that with the numbers and speculations. You know, I think the fight going to do good. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really care about all the other stuff. I mean, I guess to a certain extent, you know, but it it doesn't really matter. And they should go ahead and announce. They they don't need to be waiting on Devin and waiting on Devin numbers to announce that Frank fight and whatever. If you gonna fight, if you gonna fight Frank, fight him. If you gonna have step up in competition, you know what I mean. Go ahead and go ahead and fight him. It shouldn't be contingent upon this guy with this dude doing it. And it feel like that's just that just drag it out more. Like when Devin, every time Devin Haney free, uh, uh okay, uh Tank got to fight. See what he, like what, that. Like, where he would have been smart, where 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 Tank's people would have been smart, would have been to say, "We're gonna fight Frank on this date, June whatever, right?" And then after that fight, we're going to face the guy that Frank beat, Michelle Rivera. And then after that fight, at the end of the year, we're looking to fight the winner of Haney and Garcia. You see what I'm saying? If they did something like that, you give the people fire and you give them something to get cooking on and then they ready and, and you got built-in numbers. But see, they doing it the yeah. wrong way. They doing it the wrong way, bro. I think they, it's like, it feel like a scheming type thing. Like, exactly. Why, why not? Why not? Why not exactly. announce it? Why not? You know what? I don't know. But the last, last thing I wanted to talk about, uh, it was when I was watching these fights and watching other uh, fighters and stuff with my brother last night that, you know, found his information from wherever he found it from. Uh, he started talking about Monster Anyway and Gibrante Tank and Ryan. And so I, I wound up watching, uh, I, I watched, really I watched uh, Devin Tank, Devin Haney. Really, first I was telling them, I was telling them about the old school fighters like James Tony and, uh, I was I had watched the James Tony fight. I forgot who he was fighting, but it was it was such a good fight. I, I I'm pretty sure you'll know it's like McCallum, uh, McCallum, yeah, Mike uh, McCallum and James Tony, yeah. Mike Mike McCallum and James Tony. It wasn't it wasn't none, but it was I think it was the fight after none, and it James wind up having a draw. It was a it was a draw at the end of the fight. I know the champion. Or whatever. I was like, I was telling him, man, I could watch that fight a thousand times and learn something new every time I watch it. And so we was fast forwarding it. We was fast forwarding. We was watching. Then we start watching like you know the newer fights and stuff. Like people like I think a Shakur fight. We came up watching it, and I was like, you know, they they box. You know, they he Shakur boxes and he box pretty good. But I was like, man. They don't throw punches like like they did back in the day, bro. I'm I'm sorry. Like, I feel like watching film from back back in the day with these guys. Like, my coach sometimes tell me he'll be like, "Pat, you doing you doing six moves? You doing three moves, four moves, one punch? Right. Need to be four five punches, one move. You know, you doing all this and it." And I was like, you know what? A lot more days people are doing more pot shotting. Then yeah. uh combination. Yeah, that's why the fight last <laughs> night between Ajagba and Vianello was so good. Because you had two heavyweights that was letting their hands go. You know what I mean? They were throwing right. punches. They threw over a thousand punches between the two of them in that fight last night. And that was the type of action you don't get. Remember we saw Joseph Parker get a decision over Zili Zhang and got knocked down a couple of times. But he won the fight because he outworked Zane because Zane wasn't letting his hands go. When he did let his hands go, he put Parker on his ass. And then it's like, you know, it, it, but again, it, this is, they call it a sweet science for a reason. 
you you cannot be a world class fighter out here pot shotting people. And Shakur is the king of pot shotting. That's why he don't want to fight other guys. Because there are other guys that realize they can get in there and get on his ass. See, De La Santos is mad at himself now because he could have made one adjustment in that fight and won the fight easy. And you know what that adjustment would have been? To go after Shakur's ass. But he didn't. He laid back and waited a little bit too long, making like, okay, eventually he's going to engage with me. But he had no idea that Shakur had no intention of engaging with his ass. So right. it, it, it made it a different situation. Devin Haney yeah. is not going to fight that way. Devin Haney no, is going to figure gonna, out gonna let doing. his hand go. Yeah, Devin going to figure out what you're doing, and then he's going to mm-hmm. do what he do regardless. But, yeah. but, see, you don't have a lot of fighters out there like that. This is why Canelo is picking and choosing who he wants to fight as opposed to who he should fight because all the guys that he should fight are ready for his ass. They ready, and he don't want that. But they've been paying him so much over the past few years. They've been paying him so much that he's become, he's become like uh, 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 hardened into that thought process that I could do what I want. I don't have to fight them. No, motherfucker, you need to fight them or give up those belts so that they can be the world champions that they are waiting in the wings to be. You just want to make money? Go make your money. Ain't nobody trying to get in the way of that. But you cannot hold yourself as undisputed champion by not fighting these world-class number one contending fighters who have been waiting for over a year or more. Some of them, like Benavidez, have been waiting almost three years. Morel has been waiting over a year. And Billy has been waiting a year. These guys are good fighters. And you think that they need to fight each other as not being champions? They should be fighting for the belts that you have. Yep. And Are even Morel said recently in an interview, he said that I don't mind fighting Morel, but it should be for a world title. It shouldn't just be us fighting top two top dudes fighting each other as contenders, and this guy ain't fighting nobody, and he's right. Yep. And lastly, yep. this whole thing about Canelo fighting Munguia. Yes, Munguia is a younger fighter. Yes, Mungi is bigger than Canelo and everything like that. But let me just say this, man, plain and simple. Mungi was still a freaking middleweight. He's not a super middleweight. He's just going to be weighing in as a super middleweight when he fights him. But he's a middleweight. He beat uh, Devrinchenko in his last fight. That fight is fought at middleweight. Stop playing these damn stupid games with us. And fight guys. He wanted to say, oh, well, Benavidez is a cruiserweight hiding out in a uh, super middleweight's body. But fight you've been fighting. You just fought over. Jamel Charlo, who was a damn 154-pounder. And you're a super middleweight. Yep. Stop telling us this stupid stuff, man. Go sit your ass down somewhere. Right. You find people coming up too, though. You know? He he he's been doing that though. Man, Canelo, I can't man. stand he's... that dude, man. You know what I mean? It's like go look. You want to make your money, and 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 these damn networks just throw money at his ass. But don't nobody ever talk about his numbers. Nobody. I I think seventy eight said it the best. I shout out to seventy eight. I think he said Canelo then then did all this stuff ain't make nobody no money. Yeah. They made no. <laughs> he done closed <laughs> out bank bank accounts at HBO and Showtime for holding his his uh uh, uh bags of money, man. That that they've been paying him. He done cleaned out the houses. And the only reason he ain't go over there to the zone because they said, "Hey, man, we can't pay you like this unless you fighting X Y Z." Uh, I better go back to Al Heyman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> it. it yeah. they, <laughs> Man, I am so sick of the bull crap with these people dealing with Canelo, man. I'm sick of it, bro. You, you think Munguia got a chance to, to get him? It oh, it's depends. like it's... you know what? It depends on if Munguia 
is going out there to fight him, you know, to challenge. If to he's take, going out to there to challenge, he then he yeah. has a shot because <clears throat> youth, youth and uh, ambition is hard to measure in people. M- Mungia should be able. He should be able. But will he is another thing. Like we thought that Charlo would at least try, right? But we had no yeah. idea that, that Charlo was going to go out there head. and not even try. See, you don't know until after you done seen a couple of rounds pass and you be like, oh, this guy ain't trying to win. You know what I'm saying? Like the guy last <laughs> night that fought Jared Anderson. You give right. him at least two or, two or three rounds and then you realize that he ain't trying then all of a sudden you just turn your your mind off and you'd be like, oh, he ain't trying to win. <coughs> yeah, I got to check out that uh, the job of fight too because uh, I was I was all I was uh, hearing about and looking at was that uh, Anderson fight, but it was, you know, it wasn't it wasn't too much. You know, dude was trying to counter Anderson and it was just it was just plain as day. But. Uh, one thing, one thing else I, I wanted to say before I get out of here uh, was with Ryan and Ryan Tank and, and Devin and how Ryan w- was fighting Tank at the, uh, the beginning of their fight. And I was telling, I was telling my brother I, when we was watching the fight again, I was like, you know, Ryan got. It feel like Ryan got the punches. He got the talent. He got the. It feel like he got enough what he needed to do, but he just. Again, he just don't, ain't throw enough punches and things like uh, pulling straight straight back and not being able to move left and right, not being able to move laterally, side to side. Those things kind of, you know, showed their head in that fight with him. And it's like he does have good he does have good power, good speed, but uh, it just it just he just missing something to tie it all together, like. Not enough combinations. He is fast. He a very fast individual himself. Very fast man. But when you you fighting Devin Haney and stuff like that, and you think Tank is gonna tie you up and do a good job of shutting your offense down with tying you up and manhandling you, then you know Devin is going. Devin definitely gonna do it. You know, especially watching Devin last fight fighting uh, Regis Progray. You know, yeah. shout out to Regis, even though. He just Regis couldn't Re, Regis couldn't touch him and Regis kind of when I was watching his fight he was kind of reminding me of Ryan Garcia like one and done you know what I mean he might double up the jab every occasion but it was like you know it's kind of too few and far in between so I just I guess I was wondering to say how you see the uh the Devin the Devin fight and the uh, Ryan fight playing out. Devin has he has dimensions. Right. He has he has, he, he yeah. has uh too many uh tools for Ryan who is not technically refined. Ryan's technical uh approach to boxing is so off. His footwork is all over the place. Uh the way he throws his punches, he's wide open. He looks to load up with the single shot that he knows that is his power punch, and that's his left hook, and he telegraphs everything. So with that being said, a person who has great footwork, and this is to channel what my brother, the dearly departed Curtis Anderson, a.k.a. Kurt Sugar, used to say, a fighter without good put footwork is like a blind man without his cane. You understand? So okay. th- there are aspects... There are, there are aspects of what Ryan can do and be good at, but Devin should be too seasoned a fighter to allow that to come into play. See, and, and, right. and at the end of the day, when you're getting hit, and, and let's not forget this point of it, they try to say that Devin is pillow-fisted. Well, he may have been <laughs> stretching himself thin at lightweight, Nah, and his full strength was wasn't there prevalent. and lightweight. But now that he's at 140 pounds, where yeah, that he, he, could, he could be a little more solid in what he does, it's going to be different. 
and they're they're about the same size because they they fought you know this way throughout the years but just understand that when you are confident in your ability and you have accomplished what what Devin has accomplished it's going to take a hell of a fighter to beat him and no one has associated Ryan Garcia with being a hell of a fighter have they ever mm-hmm. so there's your answer mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so I mean, well, it's been good talking to you on this Sunday. You you have a blessed day. I, I'll see you in the chat. All right, brother. I appreciate you as well. You have a good one. Yes, sir. All right, peace. All right. Yeah, great call there from Patrick, man. Appreciate him calling in and helping to drive the sport forward through the uh, Answering the Bell show, man. But, uh, yeah, we usually go uh, two hours and a half, but today we we kind of, like, you know, went a little over, but that's okay. But I want you guys to know that we got to hear from my man, the Focus Ball. Yeah, Focus Ball talking about his merchandise. Yeah. Get ready to take your striking game to the next level with the Focus Ball. Dramatically improved footwork, timing, head movement, hand-eye coordination, reflex, and overall fight IQ. It's lightweight and extremely portable, so you can train every time, everywhere. When you don't have a coach to do mitt work, get a Focus Ball. When you don't have a heavy bag to hit, get a Focus Ball. When you don't have a sparring partner, Get yourself a focus ball. And when you just want to have fun punching and kicking, get a focus ball. When you train with the focus ball, you train your eyes and your brain to read punches so that you can hit and not get hit. Making this very simple device a must-have for all combat sports athletes and enthusiasts alike. So if you want to take your striking game to the next level, don't wait. Get the focus ball now. up man that is what's up we're coming to the end of another 
answering the bell. Today was a damn good show. We had a couple of very good phone calls from the community, man. I, I just want to say thank you for the callers and participating in the show. Uh, Mahari Nation Sports Podcast, Patrick, 225, and also uh, King Vani, 86, man. That's what it's all about. When we do this show and we're able to get you guys to participate and be a part of things, it really drives the boxing conversation forward. A lot of things can be born of the conversations that we have here on Answering the Bell. So I just want to say thanks one more time. Hope that you guys have a great Sunday releasing you into your week and we will be back next week for another answering the bell and don't forget next weekend is the uh, next weekend is the fight between Ryan Garcia and uh, Devin Haney so we'll be looking forward to that so you guys have a great Sunday Shout out to the mighty LDBC. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.